The deduction on the Mohr circle related issue is like this what we did right now the sigma n is equal to this expression and sigma s is equal to this expression. Here was our diagram a c b d and sigma 1 and sigma 3 were applied. A few things I want to add up then we will proceed in the deducing the Mohr circle. Since along this line sigma 1 was acting I can call it as the axis 1. Since along this line sigma 3 was acting I can call this as axis 3. We can see in this diagram tan inverse AC divided by CB can be called as the theta deep of AB plane or in this case plunge of AB line. Now there is no restriction in our initial condition that AC should be equal to CB whether AC should be more than CB whether AC is less than CB everything is possible in the generalized case. And unlike the Anderson's model which we will show in some other video regarding the fault mechanism, we do not have any restriction on sigma 1 and sigma 3. In Anderson's model we will find we will say that sigma 1 is more than equal to sigma 3 or in some book it is given in another way. But we have to remember that all these three cases can be well explained in the Mohr circle situation. And sigma 1 and sigma 3 can be called here as the principal directions of stress. They are orthogonal to each other and AD and DB are the planes on which they are acting and on these planes we have not considered any shear stress on AD and DB. Therefore, we can call them AD and DB planes also as the principal planes. If we consider these lines as planes in 3D, so they are the principal planes in the third time in the three dimensional case. In some cases instead of sigma 1 some books or research papers will write this as sigma v because sigma 1 is vertical and in some book sigma 3 is replaced by sigma h. We are following this symbol sigma 1 and sigma 3 throughout but in the problem in some other book or maybe in the problem set where I am going to give you I might write sigma v and sigma h. We will follow this sigma 1 and 3 throughout and if I give a problem with sigma v and sigma h, you have to alter the equation. We need not remember equation with sigma v and h that will be a confusion. We remember equations with sigma 1 and sigma 3. These two have to be remembered. Okay. Now I give you an example of what kind of problems the simple problem to start with. Imagine in this case sigma 1 compressional is 3 Pascal sigma 3 compressional is 1.2 Pascal and theta equal to 21.6 degree these are given and I am asking you to find out for this AB plane with deep theta 21.6 how much is the normal stress acting how much is the shear stress acting or in the exam we may ask how much is the ratio of sigma n divided by sigma s. So in that case what to do? We have to put these values over here find out sigma n and sigma s and if I am asking the ratio you just find make a ratio. Note that they have the unit same as sigma 1 and sigma 3 they had the same unit Pascal so here also we will get in Pascal. Naturally since it is a ratio we will not get any unit for a ratio Pascal few Pascal divided by few Pascal. Now note that in case in some problem suppose I give you sigma 1 equal to sigma 3. In that case we can call this case as a specific case of hydrostatic stress regime in two dimension. What does it mean? If I dip a cube small cube in any fluid be it kerosene or water then in all the sides equal amount of stress acts. So in that case these two will become equal. So since it is a two dimensional case I can call this as a hydrostatic stress regime. Now note that in case the given sigma 1 is acting at an angle to AD and sigma 3 may be also is acting at an angle to DB not necessarily 90 degree then these deductions will become wrong then we have to do deductions afresh. 
I am requesting the students, the listeners who are watching, can you do so? Can you find out in what way the mode circle related equations will change if this angle is say phi 1 and here is another angle phi 2. That means sigma 1 acts at an angle phi 1 on the AD line and this sigma uh, 3 acts at an angle phi 2 with the DB line. It will be interesting to see, I can write down my mail ID here and if you can solve, you can send me, it will be interesting to see how you are doing. This is my mail ID. So, I look forward to see a deduction from you. Okay. So, having done these things, we are now moving towards eliminating 2 theta from this equation and that equation. Out of curiosity, we want to eliminate 2 theta. So, what to do? I can write from this expression cos square 2 theta equal to something. How to do? Sigma n minus this expression divided by this expression is equal to cos 2 theta. Then cos square 2 theta equal to whatever I said first will be squared and kept in this side. Then sigma s equal to this. So, I can write sigma s divided by this expression is equal to sin 2 theta. From there I can write sin square 2 theta is how much. Now, we know the trigonometric relationship sin square 2 theta plus cos square 2 theta equal to 1. If I do that from these expressions, this expression and that expression, we get back this particular expression which we see has no 2 theta or theta terms. So, this is the equation of the Mohr circle that we have deduced and we will prove why it is a circular equation and how it looks like. So, now this equation we can compare with an equation x minus a whole square plus y minus b whole square equal to r square where sigma n is equivalent to x, a is equivalent to this term that is what I write here sigma s is equivalent to y and b is equivalent to 0 and capital R is equivalent to this term remove this square and just take this much that is your R term. Now, since we know this is the well known equation of a circle with center a comma b and radius r, the center of this circle is a comma b. So, what is the center of the circle, Mohr circle from here I can write. Zero point five sigma one plus sigma three comma zero. This is the center. Okay, and what is the radius? R is equal to this term. So now we are going to see how it looks like in the two-dimensional plot. Since I took x comparables with sigma n, therefore I take the x-axis as the sigma n, and never otherwise. Since I take capital Y equivalent to sigma s, so therefore I take the perpendicular axis as sigma s just like y axis and not otherwise. Now, since the center of the circle has got some number comma 0, it must be lying on the sigma n axis or the x axis. So, I have plotted a point here and have drawn a circle. This circle can represent this equation. Now, having said so, let us look at further on the radius of the Mohr circle. We said this is the radius. Now, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is sometimes written as sigma d, what we call as the differential stress. Note this is not the deviatoric stress. Deviatoric stress and differential stresses are different. In some lecture, I have covered what is a deviatoric stress. This is different. So, if I take this as sigma d and put here, it becomes 0.5 d. So, we can say the radius of the Mohr circle is 0.5 d. Now, let us see the coordinates related to this Mohr circle in more detail. Let us see some more detail of the Mohr circle, how it behaves. This is our condition sigma 3 acts along direction 3, sigma 1 acts along direction 1, no shear stress acting on AD, no shear stress acting on DB. This is the equation of the Mohr circle and I said sigma n is equivalent to x etcetera. 
So, based on that we can draw the sigma n axis as the x axis, sigma s axis as the y axis and the Mohr circle has been drawn. We want to see more detail of it. We have already said that the center of the Mohr circle is the arithmetic mean of the applied sigma 1 and sigma 3. So, if this is 2 unit and this is 4 unit, this is going to be 3 unit. So, this length from the center 0 0 up to from the origin 0 0 up to the center of the circle this distance is arithmetic mean. And we know that the radius this amount and this amount is equal to this much. So, from here we can find out these two coordinates I mean where the mode circle intersects the sigma n axis. For example, if I add this distance and the radius I will reach this point adding these two I find the coordinate this one is sigma comma comma 0 and similarly if this is the total distance and this is the radius then for this coordinate it will be this distance minus that distance if I do it turns out to be sigma 3 comma 0 and this is very important that means that in the Mohr circle that intersects along the sigma n axis along two points one of them has a coordinate sigma 1 comma 0 sigma 1 was the applied normal stress here on the ad plane and another intersection point is sigma 3 comma 0 where sigma 3 is the applied normal stress on the bd plane okay now we are going to see some special cases and how looking at the mode circle we can think quickly about the stress regime I am taking a special case when sigma 1 and sigma 3 are equal say this is 2 giga Pascal that is also 2 giga Pascal. In that case sigma 1 is equal to sigma 3 as you see if these two points have the same coordinate then the Mohr circle reduces to a point and it plots on the sigma n axis. So, if this is the situation that I say this point anywhere lying on the sigma n axis that means sigma 1 and sigma 3 are equal. Now, a special case of it if I take sigma 1 equal to sigma 3 equal to 0 that means the point will be plotted here. The origin point 0 0 indicates no stress acting on this body. Since no stress is acting on this body on the AB plane no sigma n and no sigma s will be created. Okay. Now, let us look at the other case imagine sigma 1 is acting here and as you see sigma 3 is not acting. So, I write sigma 3 is equal to 0. In that case this is going to be the plot that means the sigma s axis is going to be the tangent to the Mohr circle. This point represents sigma 1 and its coordinate is sigma 1 comma 0 and this point represents sigma 3 with coordinate 0 0 or the origin in the coordinate system. Similar to this if I consider that there is a sigma 3 stress acting on this plane and there is no sigma 1 that is what I write where sigma 1 is equal to 0 then also this will be the orientation position of the Mohr circle where the origin 0 0 represents a sigma 1 plot. Sigma 1 is 0 and it plots at the origin of the coordinate system and this point represents a sigma 3 comma 0 sigma 3 is the applied stress. Okay. And what happens if no stress applies I just now explained the plot will be at the uh, origin of the coordinate system. So, these two constitute the uniaxial stress regime. So, what we understand in case of a uniaxial stress regime the sigma s axis is a tangent to the Mohr circle this statement can be taken. Now, we are going to mix extension and compression imagine sigma 1 is compressional and sigma 3 is extensional that is what I write one axis is extensional another axis it presents compressional stress. In that case we take compression as positive as positive stress and extension as negative stress. So, say sigma 1 is 5 unit and sigma 3 is equal to 2 unit. While dealing with a Mohr circle this 2 has to be taken as minus 2 and in that case the plot will be here minus 2 comma 0 
and whatever I said sigma 1 a positive number it will be here. So, the more circle partly falling within this portion in the right side of the sigma s axis and partly falling in the left side of the sigma s axis. A similar situation will prevail if sigma 1 is extensional and sigma 3 is compressional. So, here I will take whatever be the number say I gave here 3 unit and I wrote here 1 unit whatever then this 3 has to be taken as a negative number minus 3. So, if the plot will come over here minus sigma 1 comma 0. So, in this case it will be minus 3 comma 0 and the sigma 3 is 1 unit and it will be plotted here. By the way as per my drawing this is much more than 3. So, if I take it like 8, 8 comma 0 is plotted over there. So, in this way looking at the Mohr circle we can have an idea whether we are dealing with both compressional axis, one compression, one extension or both extensional axis. This is a case where both sigma 1 and sigma 3 are extensional. That means whatever be the magnitude given say I write this is equal to 7 Pascal and I write this is equal to 4 Pascal. Then in the Mohr circle I have to consider it as minus 7 and that one as minus 4. So, what where the sigma 1 will be plotted this is the point where minus 7 comma 0 and it represents the sigma 1 comma 0 and this coordinate is minus 4 comma 0 which represents sigma 3 comma 0. So, if we look it in into a detail more circle will not be very difficult thing we have to spend some time look at the derivation look at all these things. We are now going to see how the pore pressure will affect this equation of Mohr circle and that is interesting. There can be clastic sediments or sedimentary rock where there are pores and then these pore spaces may be partially or completely filled by fluids. These fluids exert outward pressure and that pressure has to be considered in this. It is not that once I apply sigma 1 stress that is the effective stress that goes within the rock. Imagine this is a plastic sediment or sedimentary rock and you have applied sigma 1 amount of stress here and here you have applied sigma 3 amount of stress. Now, there can be pore space and that might be filled with fluids. If there is no fluid, there is no pore pressure exerted. This sigma 1 and sigma 3 are the effective pressure. But if there is fluid present in the pore space, then that fluid will exert outward pressure PP in that direction, PP in that direction, the pore pressure. Sometimes that can also be reduced by some amount of fraction. So, I can put here alpha where alpha can be a fraction. If alpha is equal to 1 that means the total pore pressure goes against the sigma 1. Alpha is let us say half then half of the pore pressure goes against the sigma 1 direction. So, in that case we define the effective pressure in this way sigma 1 dash is equal to see they are going against. So, therefore, sigma 1 minus alpha p p and sigma 3 dash that is the effective pressure applied on the rock becomes sigma 3 minus alpha into p p. So, if this is the case then this equation is going to get modified. What I have to do? In place of sigma 1, I have to put sigma 1 dash effectively I have to put this. In place of sigma 3, I have to put sigma 3 dash which is effectively this. So, as same thing has to be done over there. Let us do and see how the equation changes. So, I can write the modified equation is given by sigma n minus 0.5 sigma 1 plus sigma 3 minus 2 alpha p p whole square plus 
sigma s square is equal to 0 0.5 sigma 1 minus sigma 3 because if I put this and that over there these two get cancelled out and then square of it. So, where do I observe change from this equation and that equation in the left hand side I am observing a change whereas in the right hand side there is no change involved. So, how the Mohr circle will behave imagine there is no pore pressure then we can draw the Mohr circle from that diagram like this. This should not be a little bit modified take the sigma s axis here sigma s this is sigma n and it has a center over here and we know the coordinate of the center is sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2. Now what has become the center after such a pore pressure is active this is the change expression that comes here. So, this if there is a pore pressure case will modify to this expression I have to write down. So, this is how much 0 0.5 sigma 1 plus sigma 3 minus alpha pore pressure because 0 0.5 and 2 if they are multiplied that becomes 1. So, that is what I did and I wrote in this way. So, what has happened because of the application of the pore pressure is that this magnitude has been reduced why because this was there this is there and then some amount of subtraction has been made. So, that means with increasing pore pressure this more circle has to shift to the left hand side. So, I can write here with increase in pore pressure or with existence with increase or existence in pore pressure the more circle shifts towards the left hand side. this center will shift let us say here and how much is this amount? This amount will be alpha p p pore pressure multiplied by a factor and how the circle will look like now? The circle can look like this, this is the center. So, something like that. So, the circle has shifted in this way. If that is the case that with increase or existence of pore pressure more circle shifts towards left that means with decrease in pore pressure the more circle will shift towards the right hand side towards the positive side of the sigma n axis. So, a shift of more circle in this direction would indicate that the pore pressure is reduced. I am not getting into this factor called alpha, but this is worth investigating under what conditions, what are the physical conditions that decide this alpha and depending on those conditions how the Mohr circle shifts which can be also studied further. Consider this is a Mohr circle with some amount of magnitude of sigma 1 comma 0 and this is say sigma 3 comma 0 and this is my sigma n axis this is my sigma s axis. Now, in the laboratory experiment say sigma 3 is kept constant and sigma 1 is increased in magnitude. So, what does this mean? This is sigma 3 which is equal to say 5 unit and we maintain it constant with time. 
Whereas here there is progressive increase in the sigma 1 amount. Say we started with 8 unit and after 3 seconds we made it 10 units. How this Mohr circle will change its behavior? It will be since sigma 3 is fixed this point will remain fixed it will not change and as you see sigma 1 is moving in that direction because of increasing pressure. Where do we expect such a situation? Imagine there is a sedimentary basin and sediments are coming with time giving more and more overburdened pressure temporarily increasing pressure. So that one might be similar with this case. So here the Mohr circle will look like this. What has happened? Sigma 1 has now shifted to sigma 1 dash comma 0 and with more increase in sigma 1 what will happen? The circle will increase its radius and its center will also shift. So, like this and this is sigma 1 double dash comma 0. So, if you get such a diagram what does it mean? It means that this stress was one of the stress amounts was maintained fixed and the other one was progressively increased. So, from here to here to here means the stress amount is increasing sigma 1 is increased. And if I think temporarily this one, this one and this one that means the overburden pressure sigma 1 is progressively reduced. Imagine there is a terrain where there is erosion happening leading to in future an exhumation that is going to happen. Overburden pressure is reduced. So, starting from this Mohr circle you can think temporarily this one, this one and that one. In this way the Mohr circle will keep on changing its position where the radius will change and the coordinate of the center will change. But one thing always happens that is the center of the Mohr circle always lies on the sigma n axis which we consider as the x coordinate axis.